they were looking for stories uh, that show the internet is, you know, what you make of it. And um, they'd heard the story of how I started all this with um, 600 pounds and, and called me. And so when, when I got a phone call out of the blue and um, they said, oh, we need to have all kinds of details and numbers and financials, uh, I, I just thought, no, that's not happening. And they said, really, you need to share some details with us. Uh, and you mustn't miss this opportunity. And, and still, I said, that's not happening. Uh, and then they, they sent through a non-disclosure agreement, which was an absolutely massive form. And my mum watched it coming out of the printer, and she said, um, no, this is, is too much detail for anyone to be using as a practical joke. So I think you're OK. Just sign it and find out what's going on. And, and it was for the Google advert. So it was um, that advert that featured our story as, as the sort of the the whole face of Google Chrome, which it was incredible. But I mean, there, there was a real honesty to that advert because it, w it was done using, you know, I'd, I sold to our first Japanese customers using Google Translate, you know, and it's a free service. Um, and it was a, a Google AdWords voucher that was my advertising spend. So how far back do you want to go as to what I was doing, um, really, before I started Cambridge Satchel? Um, I think it makes sense in some ways to, to go back to um, as far as Cambridge University as a student, because that's when my association with Cambridge really started. Uh, and it also sort of points to what I say sometimes when I go to speak to children at schools or teens, young people. They don't like being called children, fair enough. Um, and, and that is that when I was at Cambridge, um, I was studying natural sciences. So I was, I was studying biology, physics, chemistry, maths. It was very nerdy, you know, rightly so, because that's what I chose and that's what I absolutely loved. That has very little to do with what I do now. And I think that's the message that I try to pass across to children, um, young people, sorry, when I go to schools. Uh, and, and that is, Decisions that you make at each stage of your life, it's, it's not what will define the rest of your life. And so hopefully, don't get too hung up about it. Um, as long as you're doing something that you really, really love, then you're doing the right thing. If you start a, a company with 600 pounds and literally every penny is going into school fees, you don't have money to go to New York Fashion Week. It's not going to happen. You can't do anything. So what I did was I, I lent people who were going to New York Fashion Week bags and said, I really need these bags back when you come back. <laughs> um, but if you could sort of wear them and try and get noticed, that would be amazing. And, uh, you know, these, these people, it was the fashion bloggers, and they were incredibly and still are incredibly kind to the brand and took these satchels and wore them at the big shows. And, and so when the lights went down and, you know, the people come up and, and the f photographs, the flashes were going off, these were fluorescent. So these bags were popping all over the, um, from the crowd and the audience and even a few front row. And the New York Times sort of picked it up and said, this is the, the street sensation of this New York Fashion Week, which then meant that suddenly Bloomingdale's and Saks were, were calling me or actually my mother, you know, um, in the kitchen. And, and we were talking to you know, urban outfitters from the States were saying, do you have a, a showroom in London? It's like, no, we've got a kitchen in Cambridge, but, you know, you're welcome to come. Um, the, we didn't have a display thing. Um, we, we had bags that we hadn't sold yet in the wardrobe in the guest room. Um, but it, it, it worked. It, in the early days, you have got to keep your overheads unbelievably low. And that means getting to the point where literally you, you can't move in the house for boxes, but it meant that we didn't have to have rent. I, I love it. Because actually that's the one that Vogue.com covered on Instagram over the weekend. Yeah. In the and it doesn't, it doesn't look like a magnet. But it's, it's just because so it's easy. It's just so easy. It's the drag. I think it's so small. This is my travelling bag. So. Yeah, you can put everything in it. I can fit more than I need. Exactly. There's the danger. Maybe I put the size down. <laughs> I had been uh, one of the official witnesses to the um, signing of the agreement between David Cameron as Prime Minister for the UK and Jack Ma. And um, 
And then uh, Jack Ma had heard that I'd won the Entrepreneur of Europe thing. Uh, and he wrote me this really charming letter because he was going to, um, he wanted to host the first big conference for women entrepreneurs in China. And in this letter, he said, um, you know, you are a global voice for women entrepreneurs. And I milked that letter mercilessly. It was on my fridge and my poor children, any time we had a disagreement in the house about anything from, you know, loading the dishwasher to doing homework or whatever it was, you know, I was pointing to that letter. You know, I think you'll find I'm a global voice. I am a global voice, so you need to take the bins out. It, it, yeah, I milked it in the, in the worst possible way. Success isn't making as much money as possible. Success is making the, the, the challenge, meeting the challenge that has been set for you. So maybe it's making enough so that you can spend a certain amount of time with your family and have the flexibility you want. Or, or maybe it's being able to work from a place where your dog goes to work with you. You know, you need to, to define really early on what for you is the reason you're doing it? The straps were coming in and they were slightly the wrong length and it was my fault I'd given the wrong spec to the manufacturer. And then I found that you could buy one of these on eBay for about £12 and I matched it to the size of, of the holes on the straps and um, I won't mess it up now because it's on the right setting. Uh, and I was able to sort of cut more holes in the straps and then cut the end and not um, have to confess to the manufacturer that I'd <laughs> given him the wrong strap length. So I could keep my credibility for £12. I had uh, a tip-off from um, Liberty London Girl, from, from Sasha, and she said, I've been sent a, a bag that is definitely one of your bags, but it's, um, have you changed your name to Zatchel's? And it's like, no, I haven't changed my name. And she said, it's definitely one of your bags. I thought, no. And I looked up, you know, this, this um, brand on the internet and it said something exciting is coming soon. Um, but it didn't say anything about, you know, who they were, what they were doing. Um, and, and then I had a phone call from someone who actually worked at one of my manufacturers. And he said, I've, I've never been party for, to something underhand before but you know, your leather is being used and, and creating, there's a different label going on it, and these bags are in the lockup across the road. And I just felt so sick, you know. You'd, I, naively and, and horribly, I had always assumed that true knockoffs would come from, you know, another part of the world where, where things were cheap and, and people didn't care so much. Never in a million years did I think that it would be my own manufacturer, somebody that I saw on a weekly basis and that I knew was making more on each bag than I was making. Um, and that's, that's awful because not only are you, you, you fighting somebody copying and taking all your ideas, ideas that you haven't even launched yourself yet because you have to share with your manufacturer everything about what you see coming for the next year, two years, so that um, you know, we've got the right machines and we've got the, the right tooling and all that kind of thing but also someone that you really thought was part of your team. You know, that, that's a really difficult thing. And I think that that was, it hit my, my self-confidence very, really hard because I had always thought that I was a good judge of character and this made me think that, you know, obviously, no, I didn't have a clue what was going on. Um, but I, I did know that even with 16,000 bags on back order and knowing that I was making beautiful bags that we were making with Comme des Garçons for their show coming up, I was not going to work with somebody who was acting in such a disgusting, underhand way. I just could not work with people like that for another minute. Um, and so I, I went down to Leicester um, with a lorry and took out all of the leather and said, I, I'm not giving you another order. But, you know, there is also, equally, there's, there's that that feeling of, I need my bags made. This is going to leave me with the original four truly nice ethical manufacturers, but they can only make 100 bags a week, and I've got this massive, massive back order. What on earth am I going to do? But luckily, this, this person made it very easy for me because um, he, he, he'd sort of turned around and he said, well, you'll be back because you've got no choice. You know, you're a stupid woman. 
and you don't know about manufacturing and you, you need me to make the bags and, and marched off and I thought well no I'm, I'm not a stupid woman and if you can manufacture then then I can manufacture I just don't have very much time because I've got people waiting for their bags and I don't have anyone to manufacture them yet but it, he sort of marched off and um, I was left with with the the people in in the factory and I said I'm so so sorry I'm taking the leather out and this might mean that you have no work and it's not your craftsmanship it's not your work at all because it's great um, but what I'm gonna have to do and it was this sort of out-of-body experience I, I heard myself saying what I'm gonna have to do is start my own factory and it's it's really close to here so if you um, if you do find that you don't have work and you'd like to work for me then I would love to have you uh, and and you know how to find me and so you know that literally was was the start of um, Cambridge Satchel starting their own factory and manufacturing in the UK for themselves it's not something that I ever planned to do and it sort of did definitely come from um, from from outside the blinkers it was not part of the plan but it was, I felt, the only way because I could not go through that kind of betrayal again. Um, and, and so in, in a typical way, I sort of drove home to Cambridge and saw to the, the sort of children's dinner and, and all this kind of thing, put them to bed and then thought, right, how do you start a factory? Well, obviously, you go on right move. <laughs> We've had Lady Gaga, we've had Taylor Swift, Taylor Swift dancing on Instagram with one of our bags, when clearly those people could have any bag that they wanted, um, is it's just one of those sort of real sort of pinch me moments. The first time I went to China, uh, I was part of the trade delegation that went with David Cameron. And so um, it was a very unrealistic view of China that I had. You know, there's obviously, there's no traffic because... Um, uh, the, the roads had been closed <laughs> for, the, for the Prime Minister. We could go in the sort of the wake um, and, and everything moved seamlessly. Um, there were no customs or troubles at airports because we were just whisked through. So I thought China was the most streamlined place ever to sort of move around. Uh, and then I went back to China as part of the Festival of Creativity, the, the great campaign put on this incredible festival of all of these British brands that were doing amazing things. And there was a big, big display in an exhibition um, hall. And Prince William was, it was part of his visit to China. And he, he was going around the exhibition and he stopped because um, we'd put together, and it was, see these have handles, but um, ours were more the sort of the classic sort of these, these kinds of bags. And we, we had them in sort of a myriad of colors. And they were, were all the same shape, same size. And they were like bricks against a wall. And we called it the Great Wall of Cambridge. <laughs> and we said to um, the, the officials out there, you know, yes, in China, you might have the, the biggest Great Wall, but we've got the most colorful Great Wall. And it became this real photo opportunity and, and people were coming and doing their sort of their, their selfies against the Great Wall of Cambridge. And then um, who should pass but, but Prince William and, and being, you know, obviously linked to Cambridge by name, I think he felt a bit compelled to, to stop and, and take a look. And he was so kind about, you know, the, the fact that he was aware that we made in, in Britain and, and he knew about the brand. Uh, and he particularly liked the purple. That was the, the colour he was drawn to. But, um, yeah, that was a great moment. And it's one of those moments that you sort of are trying to, to make sure somebody's getting a photograph because you think, look, Prince William looking at the Cambridge satchel bags. <laughs> That's what we want. We worked for a while with a, a really good PR agency that... Um, lovely Mickey Drexler from J Crew who's been so helpful to me um, over the years he sort of introduced me to people that he thought were good and, and those personal recommendations are really really key because when I started off my network was you know me and my mum and and now I, I feel like sometimes I have the best network in the world and and if you're doing something for a really good reason and you're brutally honest and you always try to do your best and you're making something that is good value and um, 
and, and really a lovely, lovely thing, then, then people are happy to help. I've got a fantastic team at Cambridge Satchel now. Hasn't always been that way, but we've sort of managed to, or I'd, I didn't always realise how important it is to interview for brand and culture as much as for skill. Uh, and I do realise that now, and I think that that's why the, the team is as, as fantastic as it is. Um, I, I think that we've always tried to, to keep reaching, to, to do things a lot better than people think that maybe a company our size can do. Uh, by, I was the first woman to win the um, RSN, which is the biggest business awards um, award for Entrepreneur of the Year for the whole of Europe. First woman ever, and that's why I got the OBE. Um, and so I feel like I can speak with some kind of legitimacy because I have done it. It's not that um, it's a, a big smoke and mirrors thing. You know, we, we've done things very honestly, but my priorities are my children. You know, my priorities are my family. And yes, my, my mum is absolutely, you know, totally involved. She told me um, yesterday uh, about w what she was thinking about colours for, for the next sort of season. And, and she's got the best eye for colour of anybody that I've ever met, you know. And that includes in the fashion industry. WGSN would kill to have my mother, but she's very busy.